He got fired twice for the crime of being number one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you just have no bitterness. About I ever tell you what they said to me? I said, I'm number one. You know what they said? <laughs> Jay. We want what's above number one. No. Yes. Yes. That's my favorite quote. No. And I went, come on. What's above number one? <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're number one. We're winning in every demographic group. <laughs> I know, but we want what's above that. That yeah. is priceless okay. show business stupidity. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's, it's, well, I mean, how can you not have fun with well, it? Well, you know, I, I believe uh, to someone who was sitting in that chair at some podcast we did here, I think I was talking about this because the subject of agenting came up. And I was saying, to me, the argument, the strongest argument for why you need someone speaking for you is because NBC had Ari Emanuel, right. a dear friend of mine, right. and a genius agent, right. and, you know, now one of the biggest moguls in the world. He had, NBC had him in their ear convincing them. I mean, that is a genius salesman right. who can convince a network to look for, what was the phrase? We want what's above number one. Right. right. That's, and you did not have an agent. Right? No, I didn't, have, I didn't have an agent or a manager. Right. Anything. And do you have regrets about that? No. I don't have any at all. Because everything I do, I spoke for myself. There's one thing about... Maybe you needed that little snake in their ear to you say... You know, you know something you don't. You don't need the snake in but, the ear. But the snake worked. Huh? It, got, it, got, it got them to, again... And how did it work in the Who won in the end? Well, they canned your ass, so you didn't. You should still be there. You, you well, are. I, I wouldn't still be there now. Why? At some point, because Why? at some point, I shouldn't have to know all of Jay Z's music, you know? I mean, it gets to the point where, you know, when you're 40 and you're talking to a 26 year old supermodel, it's sexy. When you're in your 60s, you're the creepy old guy. You, I, know? you know what? That's such ridiculous thinking. Just don't be creepy when you talk to them. Well, you can talk to any person of any age. That's a ridiculous well, restriction well, well, to that, put on. Well, that is true. But I, it is I, true. But I just say you that. You can't talk to a 26-year-old uh, without leering? Well, uh, that's not, not leering. And you were just... never a leerer anyway. You're, you're famously happily married. Right. And a devoted, faithful husband. You do not have to worry. That it, if... If they come out in a short skirt, that's because they're they're selling a movie, and that would get. Well, people... my thing is, I wouldn't change anything because it all worked out fine. Yes, but... but at least I I rose and fell by my own hand, as opposed to other people moving things around. You know, I remember one time I was on stage. Well, you didn't fall. You never fell. They felled you again for the crime of being number one. And I think if you could have had someone whispering in their ear, this is a very stupid thing to do. It's called a cash cow. Just right. milk that for as long but as- But you know, can. you find in show business, you die from a thousand paper cuts. What does that mean? What that means is when they decide you want you, they want you out, suddenly things start appearing in the trades that you're difficult. Really? Uh, th yes, I've that seen, happened. I, I've not to, no, not to me, but I, I, I would see it happen to other people. You know, things would just get like cool. Like what? Like give me an example. Like what did they say? Well, it did happen to me in the sense that once, I, I did a, oh, I did this movie. Tina did learned this movie a long time ago, and oh, I had it my contract that I had these certain dates, that I couldn't do because I was committed to. Performing. And were you the detective, that movie? Was yeah, yeah, that stupid movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what okay. is it called? I don't even remember. Oh, you do, called. come on. But, but anyway. I've seen and it. And then they said, no, we gotta shoot in those days. No, I already made this commitment. And then suddenly I started seeing things in the paper. I'm difficult. My hairdresser was arguing, I don't have a hairdresser. And I would just see all these things and I go, <laughs> okay, this is how it works. They just plant these little stories and little things happen. When you, when you control your own fate, it's fine. And plus, the nice thing was, you know, I'll tell you a story. When I was doing The Tonight Show, um, I got a call from, well, how can I say this? this uh, there, were, there was a group of people, a whole bunch of comedians were, hosting, were, were um, guest hosting The Tonight Show. And they're all handled by the same guy. And this guy called me and said, we want to handle you too and put you in the roster because we're asking $25,000 a night to guest host. And I said, oh, that's, that's okay. 
He said, what are you getting to guest host? I said, I'm getting $512 a night to guest host. Because that, that was scale. scale. Yeah. I said, okay. He said, well, right there. He said, sign with us. And then when it comes around, I said, you know, I'm going to keep my 512 a night. Okay. And then I told Johnny's people, I'll do it for 512. And then they look at the ratings and they go, you know, Lionel's getting just as good of ratings as Johnny owns the company. You can save about, you know, about forty, fifty thousand dollars a month by having him. And then I became the permanent guest host. And I never discussed money. I said the money will and come later on. And it worked out fine because I got it under the because I liked it, okay. And then Oh, and then they came to me with offers for money. I said, oh, okay, that's fine. And I never had to argue.